Uh, man, you know, it's it's that old thing, you know, perseverance, consistency, hard work, you know what I mean? Uh, my goal is to put the same work into, you know, my businesses, my family that I put into football, you know, and, and I've been running with that mantra since, you know, since I got married back in 97, you know, that if I'm going to have a successful marriage, I got to, you know, the same hard work and same consistency and discipline I had on the football field, I got to put it in my marriage and with my kids and with my, with my businesses and all that, so. Uh, it teaches you a lot, man. You know how to deal with your fellow man, and not look at his, his color, but look at you know what he can do for the overall good of what you're trying to accomplish. You know, so uh, it, you know, sports to me in general is just an incredible deal. When you, you talk about football specifically, because of the closeness of guys, I, I just believe it's an amazing sport. Welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm Emory Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, here on the campus of Mercer University with head football coach Bobby Lamb. Coach, appreciate you taking time. Yes, sir. Good to be here. Well, you are a SoCon legend. You played in the SoCon, you coached in the SoCon. This was an upstart program when you took over. What made you decide to take this opportunity when a lot of coaches would be afraid of this challenge? Well, a couple of things. Number one, uh, being able to come back to my home state of Georgia. I uh, grew up in Commerce, Georgia. My dad's a legendary coach here in the state. Uh, my brother's a high school coach here in the state, very successful. Just went in the state, his third state championship. Uh, and so we had a lot of ties in the state. So coming back into this state, being able to start a program here uh, at Mercer, uh, in the middle of the state, uh, was, was the first thing that came to my mind. And then once I met with a guy named Bill Underwood, our president, and saw the vision that he had for this program, uh, I knew this is where I wanted to be. So uh, here we are in uh, year five and uh, still trying to build it. Now, when you say that, do you find yourself preaching that to the kids? Because I think it's important where student athletes want to come someplace where they can build their own legacy. Absolutely. Uh, you know, early on in the, in the process, your recruiting pitch becomes, hey, come to a startup program play in time. We don't have any players, so you're going to be able to play. Uh, you know, you're going to build your own legacy here because you could be our first all-conference player, our first all-American, our first professional football player. So there's a lot of firsts, and uh, that's kind of how we built it. Uh, and, and like I said, right, we're right in the middle of it right now, and uh, things are progressing really well, and we're excited about the future. Coach, I enjoy watching you guys play. I'm a former college running back, so everything is from my perspective. But you were a quarterback in college, successful one at Furman. How has that experience sort of influenced how you coach football now and coach this offense? Well, when you look at my background uh, in playing quarterback, first of all, I played for my dad in high school, uh, a legendary coach, and uh, we ran the wishbone. And when I say we ran the wishbone, it was the true wishbone, exactly what Bear Bryant uh, put in at Alabama. Uh, so we were a wishbone team. Uh, I went to Furman University and played quarterback, and we were a pro I team. And uh, it was, uh, you know, play action pass, uh, running the power, running the lead draw, everything that play action, excuse me, everything that pro I teams do. Uh, and then we kind of evolved as an assistant coach. And as the as the game changes and your players change, you have different talents uh, at different positions. So. You know, we, I, I can remember in early 1990s going to visit a guy about the four wide package and, uh, and, and coming back to Furman and saying, hey, this is kind of how we need to do it. And uh, our third down package was four wide receivers. Uh, we had all the routes built in. Uh, and, and then now it comes back to, to how can you spread the field enough to get your athletes in space, but also be able to run the football. Uh, and that's a tough, uh, uh, tough thing to do uh, in, in this day and time, but I think uh, we've evolved to the shotgun package where we do all the bells and whistles out back with our running backs, our quarterback, and our receivers. But those five offensive linemen remain the same. And what I mean by that is they're going to block power, they're going to block inside zone, they're going to block outside zone. So they've got three blocking schemes that they've got to really concentrate on 
while we do other things out on the back end. So it's evolved, uh, but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, being a former quarterback, uh, I always have a lot of ideas, and my coaches will tell you that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to be uh, fundamentally sound in what you're trying to do. And do you find that when you're recruiting kids that – hey, we have essentially a global playbook. Every play is open. We have a lot of different options. Do you think they want to come in? Hey, I can do, I can see myself fitting in here. Absolutely. We, we began here in the pistol offense. So any running back wants to be in the pistol. He's, he's, he's sitting back there eight yards deep. He's downhill. Uh, he's ready to run the football. Uh, we are very multiple our tight ends. We play two tight ends a lot and two receivers. Another package is one tight end, three receivers. Uh, so uh, our tight end position is, is a good position in our offense. And then you got to have the wide you got the wideouts to stretch the field and uh, one of the things I like to do is throw it deep and uh, we throw it deep and uh, a couple things can happen number one you're going to get a, a completion number two an interference call and then number three uh, obviously an incomplete pass so we think of it in terms of two out of three are pretty good since moving to the SoCon, I, I feel as though you guys are, are right there knocking on the door. You, you're just about to push it through. Where are you right now in that building process, and what do you think you guys have to go? Well, obviously, we started football in 2013. We started as a Pioneer League football team, which is a non-scholarship Division One team. Uh, then uh, the second year, they said, hey, you're going to go into the Southern Conference. You're going to get 63 scholarships. Uh, and so basically, in my mind, we started football twice. Uh, once we got into the Southern Conference, we had to – take our scholarships and only give a few out this year, the few out next year. So we had to tier our scholarship package. This past year was our first team that we had four full recruiting classes of scholarship athletes. And so we're right on the verge. Uh, we were four and four in the league this past year. We lost one game in overtime. We lost another one on the last possession of the game. So we feel like we're right on the verge of taking that next step, which would be to be would be to get in the playoffs, in the FCS playoffs. And so uh, that's our next step. We always want to compete for a Southern Conference championship and try to win that first. And then our next step would be a playoff, be as a playoff team. You mentioned how your dad was a legendary head coach or, and your son, I see the picture over there. I wrote an article about Taylor Lamb early in this year and that connection you guys have had and his leadership. Right. So being a family of football, it, it has to be a passion, it has to be a love. What is it you, you love about the game? Well, it's definitely a, a uh, we definitely have a football family, uh, and it all starts with my dad, um, le legendary high school coach, coached for 35 years at high school level, and then he spent 17 years in the University of Georgia as director of high school relations. So he's got 52, 53 years tied into the game, uh, and he's really the one that uh, I look up to, and I remember saying, hey, this is kind of what I want to do, be a football coach. And uh, then, then you go to college and you get a different perspective from uh, Dick Sheridan, who was my head football coach at Furman, and then Jimmy Satterfield, who's a, who hired me for my first job at Furman. So uh, you, you take all these guys that you played under, worked under, coached under, um, and you, you try to draw a little bit from each one. But football is a passion uh, within our family. Uh, my, my brother's been very successful high school coach, as I said earlier. My son just finishing up his career there at App State, a very successful career. And then my nephew's right down the hallway here. He coaches my quarterback. So it just goes on and on. But I think the game, when you look at the game, and I played all sports in high school, but when you look at the sport of football, it's probably the ultimate team game. Because at the end of the day, you ain't gonna get a whole lot of glory if you're the right guard or the right tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, and defensively, you probably not get a whole lot of glory if you're the defensive tackle in there. Uh, all the linebackers get the glory, all the quarterbacks and running backs get the glory. But at, at the end of the day, it is a it is a team game. It's the ultimate team game, and you build men through the game of football. And I think there's so many different uh, examples of, of adversity that you have to go through to play the game but then you have your teammates to lean on. And that's the thing I really enjoy about coaching. I enjoy our players, I enjoy the relationships with our players and learning about them on a daily basis. Because when you've got 95 players, you've got plenty of things to learn, learn about them, learn about their families. And then after four years, they're ready to move on and go into the real world. And hopefully you've done a little bit to influence them uh, in what they're about to do uh, in, the, in, the, in society. And uh, hopefully they can make a difference. Coach, we remember a time when students only saw maybe five schools or heard about five schools and maybe the local school in your area, but now the country is smaller. I feel like everyone has the access to be on TV, to be on some sort of streaming device. Why would a student athlete with all these options choose Mercer? First of all, when we go recruiting, the first thing we mention is academics. Uh, that, that is our number one selling point. Uh, Mercer University is a small private school located in the middle of the state of Georgia. However, 
uh, being a small private school, we have an engineering school, a law school, and a med school uh, right on our campus. And there's not a whole lot of schools our size that can say that. So you can not only come to Mercer and get a great undergrad degree, you can also get a, a, a professional degree beyond your undergrad degree right here on our campus. And so those are some of the things that excite us in recruiting. Second of all, we play in the Southern Conference, which is one of the toughest FCS leagues in the country. We are Division I, we're Division I FCS. Uh, thirdly, we were located in Macon uh, in, in an area where we get support. I don't care if we're playing football, basketball, or tiddlywinks. We're going to have people here to watch us, and that's exciting. Uh, so we have our own niche, our own crowd here. Uh, we're really a hometown team, and Mercer uh, is making making his Mercer and that's kind of special uh, because when we line up to play here we got a great atmosphere so academics athletics a atmosphere the kind of the triple-a effect well coach listen I've been watching you from afar I watched you at Furman glad to see you took this opportunity in building something special here in Mercer and we wish you the best luck moving forward all right thank you very much appreciate thank you. it